Hey everyone, welcome back to OK Gen Z. And today we've got a little bit of a different video for you. We're going to be talking you through the mods I've done to my car. And my car is a Volkswagen Golf. It's a 2013 Mark 7 TDI. Nothing special, it's not an R, it's not a GTD. Can't afford that yet. When I do, I'll put that on the channel, I promise. Um, so, this is a, I think it's a, a 105 horsepower originally, Blue Motion TDI SE model. So let's start from the front. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is the number plate. As you can see, it's not a standard number plate. It's actually tinted and if you bring the camera closer, you're from the side, you can see it's actually 3D, 4D kind of. These tinted number plates got from Leicester through an Instagram page. A uh, friend of mine runs. It's called Premium Dot Plates on Insta, uh, and they cost me about sixty pound. But these are well worth it. I've gone through so many car washes. I've not had any issues, and as you can see, offsets the car really nice. Even though the car's fairly um, an inexpensive car, you can tell it's definitely different from the cars that are out there on the road at the moment. That's the number plates. The next thing we'll talk about from the front is the DRLs. Now because this was just a standard Golf, it doesn't have any of the, you know, the more expensive headlights. So originally I had the yellow DRLs and the yellow headlights. Um, so the halogen ones basically and I really hated the look of them especially because this is a silver car. You know, the newer models come with that white light making it just look much more newer. So yeah, I bought these from AliExpress. Um, I think they were around 10, 15 pounds um, for the pair, but they are well worth it. As you can see, silver car, white DRLs, looks amazing, uh, in my opinion, of course. Had, um, the halogen standard yellow headlights, which were dim, ugly. Um, these are LED um, made for the Mark 7 Golf. Um, and again, I bought those from AliExpress and uh, they did cost me, I think maybe 20, 25 pounds for the pair. Again, fairly inexpensive for what you get. I think they're really, really good looking, especially in the night. So we'll, we'll put some pictures of it on in the night for you so you can see as well. Um, but yeah, these are fit for purpose uh, in the sense that you don't need to be messing around with anything. It's literally just plug and play. You take out the old ones, you put these ones in, twist them in. I don't think they're road legal technically. So if you do take those for an MOT, um, you might need to take these out um, and put your old ones in. Now moving on to the side of the car, wind deflectors. Um, initially, I thought they were a bit, you know, naff, but now that I've got them on, I think they look cool. Um, they are Team Hiko wind deflectors, um, and they're tinted, and they cost me, I think it was about thirty pound for four of them. And it's just to keep that wind noise out. I mean, I quite like them now. I think it offsets the tint very nicely. Um, so yeah, clean control wind deflectors. I did crack it when I tried to install it, but I don't think anybody, you know, looks that pro. The, the next most obvious thing, I guess, are the pins. So these pins, um, they cost me about hundred pounds to get all four of them. Um, the front are thirty-five percent pins, which uh, means it lets sixty-five percent of the light in. Now, these are actually five percent over the legal limit. But I've driven my car for like one and a half years with the tints. I don't know, maybe a year, I can't remember. And I've not been stopped. Um, so risk is up to you. I think if you have a darker car, maybe you might get more, get stopped more easily. But because my car's lighter, I think um, I think I get away with it. Um, so yeah, these are 35% tints. And I think I wanted them darker because the, the back was quite dark and I wanted the gradient going across. Um, and the back are obviously limits. I think they're called limousine tints, which are basically, um, they only let 5% light through. Um, you can have the, the rare section tints as dark as you want. They're not, um, they're not covered by any regulations or laws or whatever, whatever you call it. Um, so yeah, um, next most obvious thing and the part of the, my car that I love the most is probably the wheels. So these are AC alloy wheels. Um, they are something flow formed or something, I don't really know. Um, they're quite light and I really like the look of them. Um, and right now they're sitting on some Goodyear Eagle F1 tires. Um, when I initially bought them, I actually bought them used. Um, so for the four of them with a used um, 
budget tires uh, that I had originally it cost me I think it was about 420 pounds make your car look much more better on the road um, and it's definitely definitely something I'd recommend if you're looking to mod your car um, I did have issues with this in the sense of uh, the original um, uh, is in the locking wheel nut it didn't fit in there so I actually only have regular five studs so if you're watching this and you see my car around please don't remove them and you know jack my wheels um, I can't afford new pairs um, and yeah tires originally these came with some budget gin new tires but tires make all the difference guys uh, this is the first pair of tires I bought brand new really and the first pair of branded tires and it's night and day difference on the road um, so much more grip so much more confidence in your car and it's literally the only thing between you and you know you de lying dead on the road so buy some expensive tires don't cheap out on that um, and stay safe out there uh, and uh, sorry I forgot the calipers yeah the calipers um, are something I did myself so as you can see they are sprayed in gold um, so I spray painted these uh, little DIY jobs so you can probably see that I've like an idiot spray painted over the brake pad and uh, this clip thing that you're not supposed to but minor it looks cool from the outside if you don't get too close um, all in all I think it cost me about £50 for to paint all four of them um, it's a long job and personally um, if you want to do it yourself it's, it's all fun and games for the first wheel but then when you move on and you have to do all the other three wheels it just becomes a chore so if I was you get it done professionally it'll cost you about 100 150 pound um, but yeah last result do a DIY job like this it looks okay especially if you're far away like that so rear of the car I actually debadged it obviously my car's only a 1.6 uh, litre TDI it's nothing special um, so I debadged it so nobody really knows what it is um, and I think it looks really cool um, that clean look for the most part um, if you ignore how drug dealerish my car looks you know removed um, yeah at the back as well um, these are again 4d tinted plates um, courtesy of premium dot plates on Instagram um, and because they're so dark uh, I did put some LED um, what do you call these number plate lights um, and I did tape it up because it was too bright so you know DIY everywhere guys yeah really looks nice on the car especially at night I think they look really cool um, and as you can see like sticking like a sore thumb this is something I did recently this was a reverse camera um, slash dash cam uh, because I have no sensors and with the tints being limo tints at the back at night I promise you you're just guessing where you're reversing into and sometimes you hit stuff but yeah, I was, I was having enough of that, so I put a little reverse camera on and I found it from a YouTube video actually, so big up that guy, whoever he was, um, on how to wire it. Um, and realistically, how you wire it, if I open this up, is you take this trim piece off, you take this trim piece off, and there's like a rubber grommet. And if you feed like a little plastic pipe or like wire through there, um, you'll, you'll be able to see that wire um, if you take off this number plate light um, so then you just tape your reverse camera wire to that plastic tubing and feed it back up into the car um, and then obviously you draw your num your, your reverse camera there and then yeah got the wheels and whatever they say um, yeah it was, it was a bit of a mission to do that and actually um, another part was um, the power for the reverse camera um, I fed that through um, into this um, plastic trim here and in there is like a wiring harness with the reverse um, with the reverse lights power. So when I shift my car into reverse, this this line for the reverse camera gets power. And on my dash cam, where where normally you have three quarters the front camera, one quarter the reverse camera. When I put my car into reverse, it becomes fully the reverse camera. So it's almost like I have like a reverse camera in my car. Um, it's a bit of a mission and you need like, I think they're called, uh, I think they're called T-Tap connectors. Um, if you're interested in how I installed it, if you really want to know, give us a shout in the comments and I'll be more than happy to make a video for you guys. Um, yeah, what else, what else, what else? In the rear, I also changed the lights, um, the reverse lights. So originally you have those yellow 
monkey reverse lights so I changed them to like those brilliant white ones which I'll show you in just a second after my friend Arjun shows you my little museum here I don't know how but even before I bought the car it's been collecting moths and flies and stuff inside of there um, and the collection seems to be growing and I don't know how or where so yeah I just thought I'd point that out it's kind of a cool thing what other gulfs do you see with moths inside their rare lights eh? let me just turn on the reverse light so you can see the white light Arjun, if you come around here, um, I'll show you the dash cam. So normally, this is what the dash cam looks like. So as I said, you have three quarters of the front dash cam and a quarter of the reverse camera. But then when I put the car into reverse, you'll be able to see, bam. Yes, the whole rear fully lit and I can finally see where I'm going. Cool. So next, I'm going to be talking to you about the interior mods that I've done. And one of the first ones I really want to show you because i'm so excited about it, is the subwoofer now when i first got the car i wasn't impressed with the sound the, the base was lacking let's call it um so yeah another opportunity to waste some money so i bought a subwoofer and it's the helix subwoofer and it fits where your spare tire originally fits so if we lift this up this isn't actually a spare tire it's the helix subwoofer which is an actual uh, volkswagen part originally um, so I bought this on eBay, uh, used for about £160 with the wiring loom and everything. And you fit it, you wire it all the way um, to the front and then optionally you can program it. So you can get a programming dongle on eBay, which I did. So I rented a programming dongle for like £15. Um, program the subwoofer. Um, so there's loads of different programming numbers depending on your car model and it makes all the difference. So let me play something with the subwoofer at zero setting um, and see if you guys can see any difference. Um, and I wasn't sure what the best way is to get the bass across on video. Obviously it's gonna sound muffled um, or whatever depending on how good your speakers are. So what me and my friend are gonna do is we're gonna place the phone on the subwoofer itself with a water bottle here. Um, and hopefully you can hear the sound as well as see the, the, the shake of the screen and maybe that gives you um, a kind of visualization into how powerful or how s subby the sub is. I don't know if that's the right word. Cool. So here, here's, a, here's a little preview of some royalty free music. <laughs> And now I'm just going to go put that base setting on max and hopefully you can tell a difference. Cool guys, so now we're inside the car. So we'll try and show you how it sounds like to us inside. So again, we put the base setting to zero. When I say zero, it's kind of the middle between plus nine and minus nine. And this is what the sound is like with the base setting at zero. Cool. And then what we're going to do now is just play that same clip with the bass setting at plus nine. So if I just rewind that to a minute. Um, we put the base setting to plus nine this is gonna hurt um, but we sacrifice ourselves for you here on OK Gen Z so here we go three two one <laughs> going to show you another little mod that costs 20 pound on amazon and we'll link it down below for you guys as well which is the led footwell lights so these guys um as you can see those strips of lights are led lights you can have them set as one color you can have them change according to the music a sound um, i don't know why they're playing right now maybe for the sound of my voice i'm not sure um but they do sync in with um the sound of your uh 
the sound of your music actually and they do that by syncing in with a mic which I had hidden somewhere and they, there's four of them so you can have them in the front and the back um, so I'll play that same music again so you can hopefully see it in sync um, I don't know if that's gonna work so great <laughs> Yeah, just be like, and now, and this, just say you've got like front and back, and then yeah. we'll show in the back. Okay. Yeah, this will just be a quick one, just to show what, what it looks like. Alright, uh, well, it's content, just, yeah. I'll just do it. I don't say anything, you just continue recording. What do you want me to say? Or just say, and this is in the. Oh, oh what? Actually, up to you. We can cut it off, because that's the thing. We can cut it off if you don't want it. Yeah, okay, yeah. True, cool. And then these guys are the ones that we've stuck under the rear seat. So. <laughs> So last but not least, I'm going to be talking to you about the programming that we did to the car um, through a dongle called Carista. So they plug into your OBD port, connect to your phone's app, so Carista have their own app. And it lets you do a few little programming tweaks to your car, just little minor things, but it's a nice little addition. So this dongle cost me, I think it was about £15 on sale. I think normally you can find them around £20. Um, and it's kind of a one-time thing uh, for you to do because you can't do many mods, but the mods that you do are nice. So one little mod that I added was the beep um, and on lock and unlock. So if you can hear that little chirp when I unlock and lock my car, that was not standard, that got added. Uh, I think it uses your car's alarm. Um, so the sound comes from there. And then another little, um, I locked my car. <laughs> another little mod that I did, which is, you know, little boy racer in me. Um, so if you look at these needles, um, we enabled the needle sweep. So you can see that sweeps around um, like that. Makes it look a bit cool. I don't know who's gonna be impressed by that, but I thought I'd add it anyway. Oh crap, I forgot the biggest thing. Cool guys, that pretty much wraps up the aesthetic mods that I've done to my car. I've not really done much performance mod other than one, which is a remap. So I got my car remapped at Midlands Tuning Centre here in Birmingham. And this car was originally 105 brake horsepower. And now I think it's running around 140, 150, which is good enough. I don't want to go stage two, stage three. I want to spend that money to get, you know, not much return so i'd rather upgrade my car entirely which hopefully will be a video coming sometime soon when i have that savings to buy the car so guys that pretty much sums up the video thank you for tuning into ok gen z and i hope you like the video that we've made today um but yeah till we see you again